Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. And a great time to be alive in Bachelor Nation. Just wrapped up charity season of Bachelorette. Now we've got Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise this fall, followed immediately in the year of 2024 by Joey as the next Bachelor. We've got a statement by Joey, what he said on his Instagram. And it's the first time in a long time that we have a general consensus from the audience on who people want to see as the Bachelor. Will this increase ratings? Some say it will. We have a Vanity Fair article that says, is the Bachelor back? We're going to get into all this and more right now on this episode. And do me a favor, follow me on Instagram at dneals for stand-up show updates, patreon.com slash daveneal for behind the scenes content. I'll be live at 10 a.m. this morning and every afternoon Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. All the little stories we don't get to on YouTube, we share them in one place on Bachelor Rush Hour. So before I share Joey's in- Instagram statement, of course, just named the next Bachelor, we'll be we'll begin filming within the next month. Here's Gary Turner, and this is his story as told by one of his granddaughters, the next Golden Bachelor. Hi, my name's Charlie, and today I'm going to introduce you to my grandfather, who's going to be the first Golden Bachelor. This is Gary Turner. He was born on August 7th, 1951, making him a Leo, being very confident, center of attention, and a passionate leader. He in high school met his sweetheart, soon to be the love of his life, and they got married soon after. In 2016, after my grandma and my grandpa had retired, they wanted to live their long-lived dream, which was to live on a lake where his family could meet in the middle and enjoy, and of course, him and his wife could enjoy. My grandma started feeling sick and we all just thought the move was very hard for her and thought that she would be okay with time. But on July 17th, she passed away and I knew they wanted to live their dream in the lake house. I don't want my grandpa to do that alone. But with that, my grandpa is the biggest Iowa Hawkeye fan traveling anywhere to just see them play basketball or football, you name it, and he knows all the players. He's the most hip grandpa you will ever meet. He was born in the wrong generation. He loves to ride quads and jet skis for fun. He watches TikToks and wears skinny jeans every day. All I want is for him to find somebody that has the same energy as him, somebody who is as outgoing as him, and someone who eats a lot of sweets. I hope you have so much fun on The Golden Bachelor, Grandpa. Wow. I mean, boy, did they knock it out of the park with this casting. It just goes to show casting so important for non-scripted television, unscripted, right? Obviously, casting is important when you're making a movie, but the writing is so important. Here, it's like, we're going to find the story. He's in a block of ice. We just need to chisel it out. So it's already, I mean, I mean you might come, I'm already emotional thinking about his storyline, that it's wild, that what I believe The Bachelor needed was just a universal story to root for, and I think that's what they found. Now, we're calling it Golden Bachelor because obviously he's of a different generation. He's older and this and that. It's different from the normal uh, love story as told on the show. Not not to say there isn't a normal love story that can be told among 60 and 70-year-olds, uh, but the idea is a very new one as we progress in society. Just this idea that, like, it's not weird to see an older couple making out, kissing, necking, as they probably said in the 60s and 70s. And, boy, are we excited for it. Who would have thought Gary the Bachelor would probably be the storyline that turns this franchise around? But also, there's more, right? The next Bachelor, which, again, we'll be begin filming in the next month, is Joey. I still don't really know how to pronounce his last name, Uh Uh, So I'm going to wait till I figure out how to say that. Uh, He said this, I can't say enough how crazy all of this feels. I am still processing everything, so please bear with me. Even though you saw true heartbreak last night, I leave this experience with nothing but gratitude and love. Charity and Dotton are unbelievable individuals that deserve a lifetime of happiness. From the bottom of my heart, I wish them nothing but the best. As for me, I cannot wait to see what unfolds over these next few months. I have grown immense, immensely with my time on the show and know that I'll always have room for more growth. But I feel more ready than ever to find my person. I know this won't be easy, but I can promise you that I will give it my all and try to just enjoy the hell out of it. All I can do is be myself through and through and hope I'll be lucky enough to find love. Thank you, everyone, for the tremendous amount of love and support I have received. Here's to another love story. 
So, okay, if you're playing bingo, growth, person, love story, you know, he got all of the bingos there. Uh, Jesse Palmer says, nobody deserves this more. So happy and excited for you. Here's to a new adventure, and hopefully we can squeeze some tennis in. Yeah, I'd love to play tennis with Joey here. I'm not a great tennis player, but I think I can hold my own. I'm sure, uh, you know, I could get some bat on the ball, as they say. So Vanity Fair wrote this article. Is it time to get excited about The Bachelor again? I think it is, but I think it's less because of Joey and more because of Gary Turner. I think he's going to deserve all the credit. With new seasons of The Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise, as well as a slam dunk pick for our next Bachelor, the tides may be turning on a flailing franchise. And by the way, speaking of Golden Bachelor, I have been invited onto a very large pop culture podcast. I don't want to promote it until I do it, but I will talk about it on today's Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind the scenes content. Here's the article. It's a quick one. What a difference a season makes. Around six months ago, The Bachelor was in creative freefall following Zach Shall Cross's season, which contained yet another racism scandal within its supposedly vetted cast and failed to connect with viewers on a larger scale. But there were slivers of hope, like the appointment of Charity Lawson as Bachelorette and ABC's parting of ways with controversial figurehead Mike Fleiss after more than two decades. I believe cousin to Heidi Fleiss. Do I have that right? Uh, the Hollywood madam. As, Law as Lawson's journey to find love concluded on Monday night, three more installments of the franchise were confirmed for the coming months. But instead of dread, those announcements sparked a strange feeling of excitement, anticipation even. I feel like Oprah tonight, said Jesse Palmer, hitting his stride as host after Chris Harrison's exit. Oh, no mention of Tasha and Caitlin. As the oh, how soon we forget. As the Bachelorette concluded, viewers were treated to new footage and official release dates for The Golden Bachelor, a senior spin on the show to be led by 71 years young widower Gary Turner in the, new se in the, in the next season of Bachelor in Paradise, which will feature four former leads. Those leads being Rachel Recchia, Katie Thurston, uh, Charity Lawson, and, right, we said, and also Hannah Brown. Both will premiere on Thursday, September 28th. That was all before Lawson learned that she'll be competing on next season of Dancing with the Stars, which airs this fall in a new Bachelor was tapped for 2024. And by the way, the only person on Bachelor in Paradise that'll be competing for love on the show is Rachel Recchia. I think we all know that. For the first time in a long time, there was palpable, only slightly manufactured energy during the finale and after the final row special. This was in part thanks to an impressive rallying of the troops. The studio audience included three former leads, Gabby Windy and her new girlfriend, Robbie Hoffman, the season's biggest pot-stirring contestant, Brayden, Neil Lane, who was MIA from Zach Shell Cross's season, and for some reason, past bachelor Peter Weber's parent. Is this even an article? What are we reading here? We're, we're, uh, anyway, uh, Charity Lawson's love story also had a feel-good ending. Uh, look, my, my thought is this. Again, I'm not in the casting process of the show or the editing and all of that. I just am surprised. Now, look... I, I wonder if we, like, so the ratings are bad right now. I know that because my channel, the views have been down, and obviously the ratings for this past season have been down. Is it because it was in the dead heat of the summer? Maybe. My overall views on my YouTube channel are low in the summer. Last week, as kids go back to school, people start watching again. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Rebecca. Where were you all summer? I see you now. Welcome back. I hit the like button. So, Either way, what we saw was a relatively unproblematic season, which is good for Charity and Daunton, but I wonder if that's the formula that's going to lead to more success with the show. I do think showing love stories is the best way to go, but I also think there can be the, like, the Charity love story can exist and also have like a Luke P. And those individuals, like a Luke P, they don't come by every year. Brayden and Logan, these sort of manufactured villains that are just nice guys with a good personality, they don't... Um, they don't create the headlines and the clicks that someone like a Chad Johnson does. So anyway, does that mean that I want to sabotage everyone's season? No. But if Joey's season has a Corinne Olympios type or a Shanae type, it'll be far more interesting than if it's just 22 pleasant people. Those are my thoughts about that. But either way, we're happy for Joey. After the, after the intriguing one-two punch of Golden Bachelor in Paradise comes a new season of The Bachelor. Charity's runner-up Joey, a 28-year-old from Pennsylvania, now living in Hawaii, 
will lead that season, and he has all the tapping, trappings of a compelling bachelor. A punchy job title. What would be nice is if they do some sort of Hawaii relief, some a Maui relief fund. It would be really nice if they work that in. If they mention that Joey lives in Hawaii and don't mention the recovery from a once-in-a-lifetime natural disaster, I think that's a missed opportunity. But we'll have to see how they tackle that. It's Because uh, it, it, Joey's not even... He's not from there, so I don't know if he's expecting to still live there. My guess is he's going to be dating people that would live with him in Southern California. That's just how it all works out. It's no surprise that ABC is tripling down on all things Bachelor, given the Hollywood strikes that have stripped scripted programs from fall schedules everywhere. Amid a deluge of new or perhaps shinier dating shows from new seasons of Netflix's The Ultimatum to CW's F Boy Island, the Bachelor franchise has made clear it won't go down without a fight. In the words of Dot, and maybe a good thing really can just be a good thing. Yeah, I think over time, uh, even though Charity Season didn't have good ratings, or uh, it had good ratings, just not good. Re- uh, it had good reviews. It, it just not no one watched it. Um, and we know that because you know the lack of. I mean, if we look over here at Charity's um, Instagram following, Joey is up to over a hundred thousand, which is good. But Charity, you know, in most in most cases, the Bachelorette would get to a million. Uh, by the end of the season, if not eight or nine hundred thousand, she's at two hundred and five thousand. That actually lines up with the amount of people that have watched my live streams. So normally, during a during a popular season, like say two years ago or even last year, uh, maybe even Zach Shell Cross's season, Zach Shell Cross's season had some pretty interesting fantasy suite drama that went on with Gabby and things like that. But on a good season, I get a thousand to twelve hundred live. Uh, live stream people in the chat at once. And the other night after the finale, we only got 300, about a quarter of the people that would normally be there. Where did they go? Did they not want to watch Charity's love story? I could only speculate on why they didn't tune in. Maybe they don't watch TV in the summer. Who the hell knows? Uh, But we'll get a better idea of the trajectory of the show coming up after we see Bachelor in Paradise Golden Bachelor, and then, of course, Joey season. In Bachelor in Paradise, folks, that trailer was insane. We have Rachel Reck here crying, Hannah Brown, Charity, and Katie Thurston there. Katie sits down with Blake Moynes. Going to be very interesting stuff. As this airs, Katie's also going to be on F-Boy Island. So lots to talk about this fall. We are going to be gearing up for what is going to be a wild fall season of TV. And don't forget to join me on the podcast Bachelor Rush Hour. That's where I've got all of my Bachelor and non-Bachelor entertainment news. I post all the most interesting things I can find online. And we talk about it in one place, 25 minutes every afternoon. Go check that out. Hey, we were featured in Time Magazine, if that doesn't say anything. I don't know what does, folks. Uh, We'll talk to you guys right after this.